to episode 8 of the Internet's Talk Show, WatchHollywood.tv. I'm your host, Frank Moran. You can follow me on Twitter at HappyGoJackie. We've got another fantastic episode for you in store today. Coming later on the show, Stephanie Baklan, my co-host, will be interviewing R&B artist and activist Lamont Wheat. But right now, folks, we've got none other than Vincent M. Ward. Now listen to the lineup for this guy. I mean, he's been, you probably know him best as Oscar from The Walking Dead, but he's also been Two Broke Girls, uh, Wilfred, Psych, which I love that show. Oh, come on, Dulé Hill? Who doesn't love Dulé Hill? Right there. Uh, he's got an upcoming project here, Lost in the Pacific, with Brandon Routh, who you know is Superman, as well as Adam in Legends of Tomorrow. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Vincent M. Ward. <coughs> the crowd goes wild! <laughs> Vincent, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks Excellent. for having me, bro. Yeah, the pleasure's all ours. Look at that. So now, I know you've been, uh, as, as Vincent's been in here talking, all he's been saying is that the, the Cavs are going to shock the world tomorrow. I brought this hat today. It don't even match what I got on. Well, just a kind of, I only brought this to stir up some, some stuff. Because <laughs> tomorrow, the Cavs going to shock the world, man. We're going to shock the world. All right, now you're originally from Dayton. Dayton, Ohio. All right, so now what was it like there when LeBron first left and he went down to Miami? Well, I was here. I was, I was here in um, California, but when he left, True basketball fans understand, you know, it's like, what else can the man do? You can only do so much if, if they don't bring him help. Yeah, I mean, it was sort of disappointing to see him go, but the simple fact is, he came back, and he didn't have to do that. He came back, last year we went to the championship, unfortunately two people got hurt, and this year we came back and we're going to shock the world. Now, him coming back, do you think that was basically everybody in Ohio said, like, all right, all is forgiven? Or are there people still that kind of hold a little grudge that he took off and now he's just coming back? No, I think the grudge is out the window. Yeah. I mean, because how many, how many athletes ever go back to their hometown and really and truly try to do something? Him going back changed everything for the city of uh, Cleveland, you know, as far as financial or whatnot. And I always told people that I would win an Oscar before any Ohio professional team in any sport win a championship. Ah, the clock is ticking, So, hey, hey, man, I want to see them win, yes. man. I come in second place with my <laughs> So maybe when they win, or if, if they win, then maybe everything else will start changing. All right, all right, so yeah, we'll there you see. go. Somebody has to go first. <laughs> Now, for you, uh, as we talked about, uh, I got your start there in Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, you played basketball uh, mm -hmm. in high school and college. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, you, you broke away from that and you did some dance for a while. Mm -hmm. I used to be in a rap group, uh, two different rap groups, the East Town Posse and the Slam Syndicate. Slam Syndicate. We used to open up shows for like MC Hammer, uh, MC Light, Special Ed, NWA, Public Enemy. Uh, it was like the, the opening act. And I, instead of going straight to college, I wanted to pursue my my act I mean my dancing mm -hmm. and we were on the same record label as Vanilla Ice or Ichabon Records get out of town and well you know back then that's when Arsenio Hall was like really popular and we actually thought we was gonna go on Arsenio Hall but after a couple of years of not doing anything it was time to go back to school uh, so a, um, a college a, a coach hit my called my mom it's like well does he still play ball she's like I think so and he's like, well, we're going to give him a full scholarship. They hadn't seen me play in like two and a half years. That, uh, but that is, uh, I just says, the thing would speak well to your talent. For two and a half years, you might not play, but everybody knows how well you were. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was nominated as a McDonald's All-American with Chris Tucker, not Chris Tucker, uh, Chris <laughs> Weber and Jalen Rose and all those guys back then. So. And you played varsity all four years? All four years. And it's still, it's still a record. It hasn't, um, hasn't changed since then. I was the first one, the only one. Man. Oh. <laughs> so now, was there, what was it, uh, as you were growing up, was you, were you kind of buying with uh, which one you were more interested in, with the arts or uh, basketball? It was definitely basketball. I never thought about being an entertainer until I was sort of forced into the whole dancing situation. What happened was I had went to a um, school dance, and the young lady's like, let's go out and dance. And it was like a slow song. I'm like, no, nah, I don't know how to dance. And she's like, come on. We get out there, I'm all on her toes and everything, <laughs> man. And I remember she's, Tisha Adams! <laughs> <All out. laughs> and I remember her saying, yeah, you're right, you can't dance. And she left me out there and walked away. And I felt like Carrie when the blood fell on her in the scary movie. <laughs> They're all laugh at you. I felt like that, man. So when I went home that night, my mom could tell I was sad. And um, she's like, well, what's wrong? I was like, I told her what happened. And she, she showed me how to dance. 
And from then, I just start learning more. And my, because my parents, my family used to call me the mechanical man because all I used to know how to do was the robot. And so after that, I started practicing. And before you knew it, we would, we would win every dance contest in the Midwest. And I'm 6'4", and he was 6'5". That's impressive. Yeah, they used to call us the Twin Tower Dancers, but we was also <laughs> known as Night and Day. <laughs> <laughs> so now you, you go back and, and kind of you say like, all right, I'm gonna say goodbye to the, to the dancing for now, I'm gonna go back to college. What was it like picking up the ball again after two and a half years? I was still playing, you know, I was still very active. Cause when, you know, when you're not doing anything, you're not making any money, you go and play basketball. Mm -hmm. And so we were living in Florida at that time. And we stayed at Eglin Air Force Base. Cause one of the, one of our, um, the DJ was in the Air Force at that time. So we just stayed at his place and we would go on, um, we just, we would just beat everybody in that little town or Fort Walton Beach. So I was already, I was always active, so. When I went to when I went away when I went back to school, there's no stopping me. <laughs> I like that. Not, all right, very nice. No stopping. Right. So now you finished school. Was there ever any thought like you know I'd like to pursue this uh, to the next level? No. I mean I, I had received letters from every college you can think of, and a lot of people thought I was going to go to the NBA. They really truly really did. But I was I was six four and I was a center. You know, six four in the NBA is a guard, and I never worked on my handles so. I was like, I don't know I'm going to the NBA, you know. I ended up working at GM. Instead of going, I was at school for like three years and being from the Midwest, you've made it if you work at General Motors. So my dad worked at GM, my uncles, everybody, my entire family worked at GM. And what happened was, I, uh, it was time for me to go back to school, but GM calls like, we want to hire you. And I ended up going to work for GM. But then I got hurt. I got hurt on the job at GM, and they told me I couldn't come back. Wow. Yeah. Now, I want to think about the basketball. So I know many people, when they decide to pursue basketball in college, you get a scholarship or an opportunity mm -hmm. like that. There are, there are things like, well, I'm heading to the NBA. That is it. But for some people like yourself, you realize, that, what's it like to realize, like, NBA is not my final goal. I'm just going to be able to just enjoy this for the time that I'm playing, and then I'll just do this on my own, but I know I'm not going to have any kind of... Uh, pursuits as a, on a professional. Right, because if, if I was really trying to pursue it, I would have went straight to college right after high school instead of going the other way around and going to a rap group. But when you're young, you make mistakes. And I, I thank God for those mistakes because it, it's made me the person who I am today. If it wasn't for school, if it wasn't for gym firing me, it was, if it wasn't for champ sports firing me, then I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Look at that. Who would have thought that would have been a prize? <laughs> Look at that. What a prize.